Good morning. Let's get a hymn books. Turn to hymn number 95. Hymn number 95. Let's all stand and sing Joy to the World. 95. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior. standing we gotta find another one let's go to 98 just flip one page 98 infant lowly infant holy or vice versa infant holy bow for a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessings on the service today. <clears throat> Brother Pete, would you lead us please, sir? Thank you, and you may be seated. It is good to see you this morning. We do appreciate you coming and uh, celebrating with us the Lord's birth, and we are so glad that we have another year here at Good News Baptist Church, and thank the Lord for you being here as well and looking forward to a new year. How many of you are looking forward to a brand new year? You know, I think it just started this 
yesterday something or other. I, I just thought, man, where did this year go? Is that right? Man, are you glad that maybe 2021 is out of here? And let's look for a better year, right? Amen. That's right. All right. Well, I'm reading for our scripture this morning. It's not the Christmas uh, story from Luke 2. I'm sure that some of that will be read or spoken about in just a few minutes. But it is a great psalm of praise. It's Psalms 135, if you want to follow along with me. Psalms 135, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 7. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Well, how many of you think we ought to praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. All right. Ms. Lanham, are you going to praise the Lord? I know you have a hard time hearing me. Did you have one of those hearing devices you can get, Ms.? You got one? I got hearing aids. Well, good deal. You don't need it. All right. We're glad she's here, aren't we? Amen. So now you can praise the Lord with us. You know what we're talking about. All right. Good. I'm glad you got to hear an age. And then verse 2. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. In other words, that's talking about us. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Amen. Just think about the pleasant, the word pleasant. The holy land is called the pleasant land. So that's an amazing thought here. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Amen. Whosoever the Lord, whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and all deep places. He causeth the vapors to Ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasures. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Can God do all these things? Now you think about this, folks. There's more water in the clouds than there is in some or most rivers. And God has... Enough water in those clouds to take care of the watering processes of the earth. But it's held together with just this cloud. Isn't it amazing that there is a river or body of water in the clouds? And God can say at any moment, drop. How many of you saw the rain? You see the rain? That's God saying to the clouds, let some water go. He could make it a river, couldn't he? Could make it, and he could make it a flood, and we could be in trouble, right? Aren't you glad he just knows how much to let go? Amen. All right. Well, anyway, that's speaking about then uh, what God can do. And we have a mighty God, and we ought to praise him today for all the things that he does for us. And especially today, we're going to thank him for sending his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth. Amen. And we call that the incarnation. So everybody together with me, let's say it so we'll know it. The incarnation. Everybody? Incarnation. One more time. The incarnation. That's it. That's what we're celebrating today. God becoming flesh. When he became flesh, was he all God? Everybody says? Amen. And when he became flesh, was he all man? Amen. All God, all man. Did he ever sin? Never sinned. Amen. Was he tempted in all points like as we are? Amen. Did he ever sin? No. no. Hallelujah. Well, we have a great Savior and a great high priest, don't we? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, they're celebrating his birth today and all week long. We should celebrate it all year long. But anyway, here's the announcements as follows. And you basically know those. We will have church tonight. Now, normally on this day, we would have a meal after the service, and then we'd have no service tonight. But since we're not having a meal today, we will um, have a service tonight. So I want you to come tonight, if at all possible. And we're going to talk about, uh, man, something I think would be a thrill to your heart. So you look in the bulletin, it tells you the title of it. And it's, uh, I, I don't know, scepter and something. What is it? You got a bulletin there? 
It says uh, the star and the scepter. By the way, get a bulletin every now and then and read it. It might be a big help to you. All right, so the star and the scepter. That's going to be tonight. All right, so don't forget, services will be tonight at 6 o'clock. And then Wednesday night, we will have service Wednesday night. So be here at 6 o'clock Wednesday night. The Bible Institute on Tuesday night will start back, I think it's January the 17th, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, pray for the Bible Institute as we get that started again. And then don't forget January the 9th is the Bible Institute uh, graduation service. And Brother Bob Reed, not Tom Reed, but Bob Reed. It would be something if I said Tom Reed's going to be speaking, wouldn't it, Tom? Yeah, Bob Reed's going to be speaking, and he has what we call global uh, Bible institutes for Spanish-speaking people. So he has Bible institutes all over Spanish-speaking countries, and uh, he sets them up and gets them going, and uh, they don't do the videos like we do. They do it a different way. But anyway, he, Bob Reed will be here to speak about that. Then we'll graduate, I think, three uh, be here present with us and we'll see if maybe more we'll see how many show up all right well anyway bible institute usually is tuesday night starts january 17th then uh, wednesday night church at six o'clock thursday's individual visitation and friday is christmas eve right but friday morning brother wayne and brother danny you let me know if we're going to meet or not it's up to you guys but if you're going to be here at nine o'clock men's prayer meeting at nine o'clock friday morning if these guys agree to it and uh, if we don't, we just pray where we are. So I know that you will pray for us, and we appreciate all your prayers. Can I tell you something unusual happened at a funeral? We went to a graveside funeral uh, one day. I can't remember which day it was. Tuesday, I think. And anyway, we went to that graveside funeral. An old fellow that I know from years ago, um, he doesn't go to our church, but at one time he went to a manual, and it's been a long time since he went to a manual. But anyway... Uh, his, um, uh, let's see, this, I'm not sure how, to, I won't tell you the family uh, connection, so it gets confusing. But anyway, one of his family members by marriage passed away, and we were at the funeral. So this fellow that's about my age, I started to say a real old fellow, but I'm not going to say that because he's about my age. He came up to me and said, he talks real slow. I love to hear people talk slow, don't you? I just love it. He says, Break your martyrs? I said, yes, sir. He said, you've been plowing the gospel around here a long time, haven't you? I said, yes, sir, I have. 21 years. He said, I see you on TV. <laughs> I said, oh, my Lord. I said, that's YouTube. Oh, well, I see you on TV. Okay. But you know what, folks? We never know who's listening, do we? We do not know who's listening to these programs. So in a while, we'll have the program. It'll go out tomorrow, and people will be watching it. So you think about that. We want to be a witness, don't we? We want to be a witness to those people that uh, watch our program. All right. Well, anyway, so that's so much for that. Uh, let's see. I think I've got all the announcements. Next Sunday, though, we'll have one service next Sunday. Next Sunday, just one service, 10 and 11, of course. Sunday school, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock preaching. And Lord willing, on Sunday at 10 o'clock, I'll be back to the PowerPoint. So for the Sunday school class, back to the PowerPoint on the five blocks that keeps man from God. So we'll be back on that spot on this coming Sunday. Lord willing, 26th, I think. Yeah, 26th. Christmas is Saturday, right? Merry Christmas. Okay, everybody respond. Merry Christmas. Boy, we got that done, didn't we? <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Let's enjoy each other and the Lord specifically today. I'll ask the ushers to come at this time. Take the offering. Take it fast because the pastor done used up a bunch of time. I'm kidding. <laughs> Brother Bob, will you pray for the offering? Heavenly Father, thank you for another wonderful day. Praise you and love you, Heavenly Father. And I just pray for all the people that are here this morning, Heavenly Father. And I pray for those that are sick, Heavenly Father. Be with each one. Help them, Heavenly Father, and be with us. And we just praise you and honor you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen.
is the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids jingle belling and everyone yelling, be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. Bah humbug, says Scrooge. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes around with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Wow, such anger. But they didn't stay that way. Grinch's heart grew three sizes. And became, he became a happy, caring, and loving friend to the Who Village. Scrooge was visited by three ghosts who reminded him of his past, enlightened him on the present, and showed him his future, which caused him to become a desirable pillar of the community. These are great stories with happy endings for the Christmas season. Everybody loves the warm feeling of the Christmas season and all it provides. Love, joy, and sometimes a little peace for a little while. The manger scene sits upon many fireplace mantles. And on display in the front yards, everyone loves baby Jesus story found in Luke 2. But they fail to realize the manger is only a start of something mankind, past, present, or future, could ever fathom. Who is this baby? And why is he here? child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our 
In the opening verse of John's Gospel, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. None of the other writers give this name to the Lord Jesus Christ. John recognized that the function of a word is to express the mind and the heart of the one speaking. Without words, the mind of man could not be known, and if God had not expressed himself in the word, it would have been impossible for man to know God. Paul describes it thus, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. That's found in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. That's John 1 and 14. Jesus was the Word in flesh. verses 6 through 9, we read, There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. 
that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. John the Baptist readily admitted that he was not that light, but that he was sent to bear witness of that light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's in John 8, 12. Since Jesus came, there is no longer any excuse for men to grope in darkness. Let's take our hymn books, hymn number 334. 334. You can remain seated, 334. Lost in the darkness of sin The light of the world is Jesus Like sunshine at noonday His glory shone in The light of the world is Jesus Come to the light is shining for thee Sweetly the light has dawned upon me Once I was blind but now I can see
Jesus is the Christ. <clears throat> I suppose there has been no mortal on the face of this earth who, have given, who could have been more proud, and rightly so, than John the Baptist. But John was very careful to point all honor, glory, praise, and worship to the word in flesh, the true light, the Christ. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we might give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, making straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And that's from John 1, 15 through 23. Of course, the religionists could not understand such words as, He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. John the Baptist knew he was announcing the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the King, and he testified that the true light was the one who had brought grace and truth down to man. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Jesus came into the world to declare God's love, to demonstrate God's love, to live God's love, tenderness, and compassion in everything. He did and said, he came not to do his own will, but to do the will of the Father. Just before he died, he lifted his eyes to heaven and announced in prayer, I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. John the Baptist wanted all eyes on Jesus. He did not want anyone to misunderstand his message. He pointed to the Christ, not to himself.
Lord, how I love thee. Infinite, all wise, compassionate God, how oft I have thought of the path thou didst trod. Brief years on earth were a tale of deep woe, for suffering and sorrow was all thou didst know. O Lord, all thy beauty I hardly can trace. Mighty in power, you flung into space, planets in orbit and stars made to shine, but wonders far greater were meant to be mine. Savior and sovereign, how gracious thou art, willing and able to dwell in my heart, bringing full pardon and cleansing for sin, causing the joy bells to echo within. Thrice holy, unblemished in all of thy frame, I marvel to think I may call thee by name. But grace so amazing, so deep and so wide, has drawn me ever so near to thy side. To thee be all glory, now and for I, offerings of worship I bring thee today. And bowed low before thee, here is my all, yielded this moment to thy beck and call. Lord, how I love thee with all of my heart. Still I must follow, ne'er to depart. Soon all the shadows of night will be past. Then twill be glory with Jesus at last. Jesus the Lamb. And then one day John announced, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That is in John 1.29. What a tremendous declaration. John knew that in the Old Testament era, the lambs offered by the worshipers, the blood shed by the priests, covered only the sins of the individual, and that only for a season because the offering must be repeated again and again and again. But John announced the lamb that would take away not only the sin of the individual, but the sin of the whole world. In 1 John 2, 1 and 2, we read, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. It is clear that Jesus' blood was shed for the remission of sin, not only for the individual sinner, but for the sin that would damn all men.
my sin away. Once 